6.30 by our studio clock. You're welcome to today's edition of Prime News on my Media Prime. Thanks for being a part of uh, this edition of the news. So we are live from Douala, the economic capital of Cameroon. My name is Gienda Peldrin Blanche King. We start today's edition of the news from the West region of uh, the country where a 13-year-old girl has allegedly been raped by a gendarmerie officer in Babaju, West region of Cameroon. According to uh, sources, the incident occurred in the course of the victim trying to reclaim debt owed them by the said officer. Details in the following report compiled by Dalingonde. In the midst of so much chaos, atrocity still carries the order of the day. Here comes another heartbreaking mishap which has befallen this young girl, an adolescent aged 13, who happens to be a student of government bilingual high school Babanjun, is now a rape victim. The story holds that the girl, who usually assists her mom in selling roast fish beside the Babanjun Gendarmerie Brigade, was sexually abused by a gendarme officer right at the premises of the office, where she had been sent by her mom to reclaim money owed them by the said officer. Upon arrival, she was psychologically tortured with a death threat by the officer after taking advantage of the young girl. I only went to collect the money he owed us. He asked me to come inside and get the money. Then he took me to a certain room. However, despite the threats rained on her by the said gendarmerie officer, the young lady would not adhere as immediately she decides to inform her parents. I'm yet to understand how someone would do such an evil act. My daughter came to me and made me to understand that she had been raped. Immediately, she was rushed to the Barbagian Medical Center where a series of tests were conducted. When we got to the hospital, the results confirmed such an act had actually occurred. So I don't know what he has done to the child. This is more than me, but all I can say is for justice to take its course. Angered by the situation, the furious population upon opening a lynching operation, the perpetrator then sought refuge at the Buddha Gendarmerie. However, the population awaits spending test results from the medical center while hoping that justice be made. 32-year-old court clerk by name Aristide Francois has died from injuries sustained during a fight with his girlfriend. According to reports, Aristide Francois, who was resident in the East Region, had a violent dispute with his concubine, 27-year-old Tega Clarice Nam, former wife of a B element and mother of two children. Aristide refused a breakup after two years of a relationship as suggested by his concubine. Talks turned violent and the deceased threw out some of his girlfriend's belongings. All attempts by Clarice to settle things were futile and in an attempt to defend herself from her boyfriend's uh, blows, she stabbed him several times on his stomach. Nanga Aristide was rushed to the hospital where he died yesterday in an operation room. Meantime, Tega Clarice on her part is under intensive care awaiting operation. Away from that, the Catholic priest who was abducted or kidnapped on the 20th of May 2021 has been released. Father Ebuka Christopher spent over a week in custody. It was an emotional atmosphere as the Christians of uh, the Manfe Diocese welcomed their, their, their father back safe and sound. Details in the following report. Reverend Father Christopher Ibuka of the Mount Diocese in the southwest region, who was abducted on May 20, 2021 by alleged separatists, has been set free. He was freed yesterday after over a week in captivity, though the reason for his kidnap is still not certain. News of his freedom reached the Catholic Christian community in Mount and in groups the Angs had present to express their joy, seeing their spiritual God alive. Well, the brothers are back. very happy. Oh, yeah. The Lord has done it for us. <laughs> Every mother of Christian charity has won the battle for us. Amen. Amen. As you Amen. see me, I am Amen. terrified. Amen. Nobody has touched me. Amen. I am whole and happy. Amen. 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 This is not the first time the church is targeted and religious leaders kidnapped at the wake of the crisis. August 2019, two Catholic priests were kidnapped by unknown gunmen at Ibao village in the northwest region of Cameroon. 2018, a Kenyan priest was shot dead in front of the church parish in Kembung, 
southwest region of Cameroon. 2020, late Archbishop Emeritus of Archdiocese of Douala, Christian Cardinal Tomi, was kidnapped and held hostage for hours before finally released. So many other clerics have been taken hostage by individuals who on some occasions distanced themselves from the act. Following the recurrent prosecution of the church, Christians have raised worries as to why the crisis is diverting attention towards the church, a question that is raised after a cleric is kidnapped, insinuating that the crisis and fighters have no respect for the church, Christianity and religion. A youth empowerment project worth 23 million francs will soon be executed in the southwest region as one of solutions to the ongoing socio-political and economic crisis in the country. This was revealed during the official launch of a fundraising scheme by the Southwest Youth League, which took place in Boya recently. Top on the agenda was the return of peace and normalcy in the two English-speaking regions of the country and youth empowerment. Details with Clarice Ekoe. As the socio-political and economic crisis in the two English-speaking regions of Cameroon drags on, these are some youths drawn from the Southwest region who have come together under the canopy of the Cameroon Youth League, Soweyol, to officially launch a fundraising scheme that will enable them embark on a regional peace-building sensitization tour starting this month of June 2021. We have a budget of close to 23 million, and uh, if, we do, if we are to do a rough calculation, calculation you see that we will, will raise more than 2.5 and which is not a bad start. I think I'm satisfied with the start. As I said, it's not an event, it's a process, so it continues. Two days from now, we are going down to the field for a regional peace-building sensitization mission. We want to preach and talk peace to our brothers and sisters. This is um, the end point of a long last um, period of discussion and consultation, and now it's time for action. To ensure the inclusiveness of all youth in the region, the president of Soweyol unveils the strategies to be employed with focus on youth holding arms against the state. What we are doing presently is that we are putting, we are putting up divisional bureaus and sub-divisional bureaus of the Southwest West League. It means that the Southwest West League will be represented, represented in all the administrative units of the Southwest region. By so doing, it gives us a mastery of the entire youth population of the region. We we'll try as much as possible to ensure that every town and village in the southwest region should have a youth leader, whereby that person can be giving us day-to-day -day report on what is happening in that community. Also present during this launching was Barista Agbo Bala, a human rights activist. In his presentation on the importance of peace, the human rights activists encouraged the youths to be fully involved in the socio-political life of the country while consolidating peace. This is a continuous process. You know, it's a step in the right direction. Um, just like how what happened at the Grand Dialogue and what has been happening by other stakeholders. You have to leave a legacy for posterity. We expect the youth to add their voices because when you look at the debate, the discussions going on, the youths are not very involved, but they bear the brunt of the conflict, either by the end of the fact that they are not going to school, most of them who are fight, fighting are, are, are youth. So, I am eternally very optimistic. So we are through this project intends not only to consolidate peace by convincing youth in the bushes to drop arms, but also ensure the youth are economically empowered. Councillors of Limbetu Municipality have voted in the sum of 952 million as draft budget for the current year. The 2021 proposed budget experienced an increase of 252 million, indicating a 25% increase as compared to that of last year. Komono Rimbom in the following report. Management, staff, and councillors. Of Limbe 2 Council have successfully held the first ordinary session dedicated for the examination and adoption of the administrative management and storekeepers account for the 2020 fiscal year. The session was chaired by the mayor of Limbe 2 Council, His Royal Highness Chief Walker Daniel Divengale, alongside administrative officials of FACO Division. Addressing the quorum, the mayor cautioned the population not to hail to individuals who sow seeds of discord and insecurity within their communities. The mayor enumerated several developmental projects carried out by the council in 2020. Some of the projects include the elaboration of the Ngeme sector plan, 
rehabilitation of GS Patocare equipments to support the fight against COVID-19 and non-biodegradable plastics, construction of a block of classroom at GS Wovia, a borehole at Botaland Village Community Hall, amongst others. Going by Mayor Woka Daniel Dive, the 2021 draft budget will experience an increase of 552 million francs CFA, indicating a 15% increase over the 2020 draft budget. The last fiscal year, as we know, the in the two council account was initially balanced. The revenue and expenditure to the tune of 550 million. And we only had an additional budget of 252 million to make a total of 900 million. 902 million from CFA. Sitting in for the Senior Divisional Officer for FACO, the First Assistant Senior Divisional Officer, Madame Yen von Marilyn, accompanied by the Divisional Officer for Limbe 2, Serge Maker Eber Albert, urged the Mayor to strictly implement facts assigned to him by the government for the benefit of the population in moving the country towards emergency by 2035. Despite the difficulties posed by the COVID-19 pandemic and the Anglophone crisis, Limbe 2 Council has succeeded to realize several projects. She challenged the mayor to complete projects which are ongoing for the benefit of the Limbe 2 municipality. Madame Marilyn Yefon advised the mayor to clear off outstanding salaries owed workers for more than a year. She saluted the efforts of the mayor and his team in manning the affairs of the council barely one year four months elected into office. The city of Kribi in the Ocean Division South region of the country has since 2016 been chosen by a charity foundation to host a monument called uh, the Mother of Humanity. The project, which is a gift from some black Americans to Africa, estimated at uh, 200 million U.S. dollars, has been on standby for about five years now, as Audrey Zatsa tells us in the report that follows. C'est Kribi, la ville balnéaire. Situé dans la région du Sud, qui a été choisi depuis 2016 pour abriter le grand monument, la mère de l'humanité. Lorsque les dirigeants de Arc Diable ont porté à la connaissance du gouvernement la possibilité qu'offrent les Américains à construire sur le continent africain un monument, le Cameroun, l'Afrique en miniature, devait à tout prix saisir cette opportunité pour être parmi les pays candidats les plus sérieux pour accueillir ce monument. Ce monument, offert par le peuple afro-américain, a été conçu et réalisé par l'afro-américain Nigel Beans. D'après la maquette, il est en bronze d'une hauteur de 95 mètres, comportant 29 étages, 54 maisons de la culture représentant les 54 pays africains, un parc dénommé Motherland, sans oublier les aménagements connexes. C'est une communauté de Noirs américains qui a décidé de financer le projet avec pour coût final 115 milliards de francs CFA obtenus grâce à des donations. Mais sa matérialisation au Cameroun traîne encore du pas pour des raisons inconnues malgré la pression américaine contre le retard. Un joyau pourtant convoité par plusieurs pays et le Cameroun choisi pour sa diversité culturelle, climatique et géographique. La réalisation du dit monument permettra pourtant des retombées économiques énormes pour le pays et de matérialiser le lien culturel entre l'Afrique et la diaspora. On our feature page, we'll talk about the hike in prices of uh, some basic food items, uh, tomato fruits being uh, one of them. My major prime staff lady, Nora Kakebi, visited the Bonamusa de market where traders and consumers alike uh, say they are worried or disturbed about the uh, recent hike in the prices of tomatoes. Her report. There is a general shortage in the supply of tomatoes, which has consequently led to an increase in the prices. Tomato, a precious vegetable mostly consumed by over 70% of households in Cameroon on a daily basis, has become quite expensive. Due to seasonal changes, this tomato dealer at the Bonamusadi market says this is a cause for the price increase. In the past two last three years, also we are still working. Because 
<laughs> During the peak season, the number of tomato fruits which could not be counted before for 100 francs can now be easily counted for 500 francs. Talking on how the current shortage in the supply of tomatoes is affecting the business, this other dealer says the drive to put food on the table is what keeps them going. While the government is yet to notice the situation, customers are considering other options. We change when it's high like that, we pass for another thing. And when you come down, we buy, um, we buy so many now so that we can put to the refrigerator. This increase in the price of fruit tomatoes, which is proved to be temporary, is expected to take a different drift only during the next peak season. You're watching Prime News on My Major Prime. Today is Global Running Day, observed every first Wednesday of June. The idea of the day is to get young people excited about fitness, its multiple health benefits, as well as contributions in fighting threatening diseases like cancer, uh, stroke, heart failure, amongst others. Bokengo Kemia Worthy completes the story. Running is considered a form of aerobic exercise whose health benefits are amazingly beneficial to vital organs of the body like the heart. Running provides so many physical benefits because it's the most efficient and one of the most intense forms of exercise that you can do. Let's start with the heart. The heart is the biggest muscle and the strongest muscle in your body. When it has to work hard, it's going to benefit all the systems in your body. Your body is requiring more oxygen and more nutrients when you're running. So your heart's working harder to provide those nutrients. It's getting stronger. That strength is going to strengthen the capillaries and the arteries in your body to decrease your blood pressure, decrease your risk of heart attack and stroke, and give all of your body systems a boost. From reducing the risk of heart attack to managing better weight, as well as lowering blood cholesterol level, blood pressure, and fighting off cancer, diabetes, and more, Physical exercise is one of the most successful safe methods for better lifestyle choice and health. The confidence in your abilities, your physical abilities, translates into other areas of life. So if you know that I'm strong, I'm competent, my body is amazing, that confidence can spread into relationships. Intense exercise really helps mental ability. Also creative uh, problem solving is sharpened with intense exercise and, and running is a great way to do that. This year's event encourages steps and try to be taken more for healthier, fitter lives. Out of uh, the country, Amnesty International has urged authorities in charge to ensure that officers responsible for the deaths of uh, dozens of demonstrators uh, between April and May are, uh, are tried or prosecuted. Details of these and more with Alim Sama in the following report. At least 23 migrants have drowned off the coast of Tunisia as they attempted to cross the Mediterranean from Libya to Italy. The humanitarian organization, the Tunisian Red Crescent, said 70 other passengers from an overcrowded boat were rescued, as were a further 39 migrants on a second boat that sank in waters close to the Tunisia port of Sfax. The tragedy is said to be the latest in a series of drowning incidents in the area. Note should be taken here that the numbers of persons attempting the dangerous crossing from African countries to Europe have increased in recent times as the weather has improved. Amnesty International has asked Chadian government to make sure that officers responsible for killing protesters during April and May demonstrations in the country are prosecuted. The demonstrators were requesting the return of constitutional order following the death of President Idris Deby Itno from gun injuries on April 20 after clashes with rebels in the north of the country. It is worth mentioning that his son, 37-year-old four-star general Mohammed Idris Deby Itno, took over leading the military council until elections are held. The protests which followed were banned and met with brutal force by the security forces 
leaving dozens dead and hundreds arrested. In Mali, the African Union has suspended the country from the organization following last week's military coup, being the second in nine months. The first was last August following the military coup, but the country was reinstated after the heads of a civilian-led transition government were announced. In a statement, the AU called for a return to civilian government, saying it will not hesitate to impose sanctions and other punitive measures unless troops were urgently ordered to return to barracks. Leaders of the West African bloc, ECOWAS, on Monday also suspended Mali's membership, calling on the military government to adhere to an 18-month transition period towards presidential elections in February 2022. In sports, so today is day five since the launch of Cameroon International Cycling Tour, handling a distance of 109.6 kilometers. In the following report, a topic content talks about uh, the results uh, so far, and uh, he equally handles the forthcoming preparation for Can Senior uh, Female Handball. His report. Two cyclists international du Cameroon, Le Bulgar Ivanov Borislav. Et le vainqueur de la cinquième étape en 2h17 minutes 6 secondes, ici à Douala, sur une distance parcourue de 109,6 km en circuit fermé. Il a reçu une prime de 200 000 francs CFA. Le gouverneur de la région du littoral, Samuel Djedoné Ivara Diboa, a donné le feu vert du départ de ce critorium de 8 tours Douala-Douala aux environs de 10h et 11h. À l'issue de la course, parmi les athlètes marquants, Le Camerounais de la CNH Vélo Club, Telas Artus, est classé troisième avec un écart de 40 minutes face au deuxième. Son compatriote Clovis Kamzom Abesolo, quant à lui, conservait le maillot bleu hier lors de la quatrième journée entre Loum et Kribi. Par ailleurs, pour parler du handball féminin senior, le Cameroun prépare sa Coupe d'Afrique des Nations à travers les entraînements et les matchs amicaux. Nous avons fait des matchs amicaux contre des équipes aussi bien féminines que masculines où nous avons tiré certains éléments, certaines imperfections et nous prenons donc le temps dans les jours qui nous restent de faire quelques ajustements par rapport aux manquements que nous avons pu à constater. Ces préparations servent de tremplin pour l'engrangement des victoires. L'objectif qu'on s'est fixé depuis était de remporter cette coupe et qualifier l'équipe pour le mondial. Cette compétition se déroulant bientôt, mais dans un contexte de crise sanitaire critique, la Confédération africaine du handball entend mettre sur pied un bout sanitaire pour lutter contre la pandémie du coronavirus lors de cette dernière édition. Ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of today's edition of Prime News on My Media Prime. Thanks for being with us. See you tomorrow, God willing, at 6.30 for another edition of Prime News on My Media Prime. You benefited from the technical expertise of Ewane Eli Nolinga with coordination from Faith Tata Berenue. My name is Gienda Perjim Blanche King. Stay tuned to My Media Prime at 7 p.m. Cameroon time. Prime Hour will be live with Kim Leonard and his panelists. Happy viewing and good night. Thank you.